I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! You got space, man, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 5. I'm your host, Nostrada Ben, and I host this episode with my partner, Johnny D. Hey, how's it going today, my friend? Fine, and you? Yes, I'm you know going... What? No. Uh, yesterday, I ate pizza. Okay. <laughs> but today, it's pizza time. Pizza guy. Pizza guy, of course. And we discovered him a couple of months ago. It was... Uh... Honestly, the uh, the internet sensation because we discover him uh, during uh, uh, our uh, AEW. Dynamite. Yes, exactly. I'm talking about Luigi Primo. As you going today, my friend? Uh, I you... want Luigi Primo, and I make a good pizza. Uh, nice to see you, Jonathan Benoit. Thank you for having me on this show. Uh, well, thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, Ah, finally, we have you on our show. That was not easy because, as I said, uh, sometimes uh, our guests are very busy and uh, uh, and, and our too. So um, this is an honor that you accept our invitation for this uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, depending your uh, generous time. So here we go, my friend. For the first question, go okay, ahead. The inaugural question. Yes. Uh, okay, Mr. Luigi, uh, first of all, uh, who was your wrestling trainer? So I was trained by a, a regional wrestler here in Texas named okay. Jojo Bravo. Okay. 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 He now wrestles as a Tiger Pants. JC's. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, nice. And uh, for your information, uh, everyone, uh, the guy is not related with uh, the late uh, Tiger Mask. Uh, Canadian strongman Dino Bravo. So uh, this Correct. is another guy. So, and uh, we discover you as a pizza maker and a, um, the the, uh, the YouTube sensation and. In ring, you have, uh, uh, of course, uh, a pizza maker gimmick. So who is behind this idea of, of your gimmick? Because, God damn, it's so cool. And I remember uh, Benoit and Luigi, of course, that during the golden era and in WWF, the gimmick was the, the priority. And, God damn, I love your gimmick because... Uh, Every single time I, uh, I'm watching your match, uh, it's always uh, traveling back in the days, and I love it. So who is behind your gimmick, my friend? Uh, well, thank you very much, first of all. So about, a, I would say, 10 years ago, I, okay. was work, I was working at a pizza restaurant, and uh, I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I came to the ring and spinning a pizza? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and so I uh, I did that, and it got a huge reaction. Okay. So I, from then on, started incorporating more things from the pizza restaurant into my matches. Okay. And then eventually, it got it to the point where all I was doing every day was making a pizza and working out and a training for a wrestling. So the the gimmick has become a very real. Ah. Oh, and, wow. and that it's just the making a pizza and a wrestling all the time. And uh as I have wrestled more and more, I've tried to incorporate more and more things from uh, the pizza restaurant, different uh, dough techniques. Yeah. Now um, I have uh, throwing a pizza cutters, which I can't do in a wrestling match typically because <laughs> I get it disqualified even for that. But uh, <laughs> just in my backyard, practicing with the pizza cutters, practicing with the pizza peels. But um, in the ring, different uh, techniques I can use with uh, the pizza dough, mostly either one a dough or a you see me using a two dose on a special occasions. 
Nice. OK. Uh, you've won the RCW titles uh, twice. Do you consider that one of the most important achievements of your wrestling career? And so, yes, the RCW international title was a huge accomplishment for me because that match was in a, a triple threat against a local wrestler here and okay. also um, Supermax Sean Hernandez. Okay. It, yeah. Um, so it was a triple threat with him. Huge a man, terrifying a man. Uh, I got the pin on the other guy, Alberto Del, Del okay. Frito. But uh, being in the match with him and, uh, you know, surviving that was a huge accomplishment for me because after the match, I was a bleeding. And wow. what, what you don't know is I'm a bleeding because in that match, I had my pizza dough. I saw him across the ring from me. I threw it at him. He catches it. He just swings at a full of force and it hits me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just explode with, with the blood. So when people ask about the ado, if it hurts or not, I can't appoint to that uh, because, yeah, my, my ears were ringing. I was reeling. But um, but it felt good to uh, to uh, go through that and to win that a title. And that was my first title. And since then, I've had a, a couple of other ones, too, which I'm, I'm very proud of as well. And that, that, that was real blood. That was not... Uh... Tomato sauce, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My inner marinara. <laughs> uh, you have been involved in a, a comic statement with uh, Chris Jericho and his personal stable. I'm talking about uh, uh, Jericho Appreciation Society. Uh, are you happy uh, about this statement? Yeah, that was that was a great time. Um, you know, I think Chris Jericho he saw my first appearance on an aw okay yeah, i was had an interview um on a dynamite where the ethan a page came and it kicked me in the face and then dan house and it comes in <laughs> and uh so i think chris jericho saw that as well as some of my uh, other work and um he asked for me to come back and uh come and be his personal pizza chef so <laughs> that was a that was a lot of a fun to uh to go out there and see like uh, how they did things in terms of the uh, cameras and um, you know, where I entered from, where they entered from, how everything came together, when the crowd reacted to each part of the segment we were doing, that was a lot of fun to do. And yeah. um, you know, as I, the funny thing was I got a punch and a knocked out by uh, knocked down by um, uh, Daniel Garcia. And while I'm laying there with the pizza dough on my face, All these crazy things keep happening. Like more people keep it coming to the ring. Like uh, <laughs> Brian, Brian Danielson, it comes to the ring. I think one more person, and I'm just laying there like this. This is a crazy. I'm in the ring with a uh, Chris Jericho. <laughs> Brian Danielson's here. They're making a match. Uh, Daniel Garcia just uh, just asked if people wanted to see me a tag with him, and everybody cheered. So that was a very fun experience to. Uh, be in the uh, the uh, vortex of the uh, wrestling world that's always the uh, fun thing about getting on these big shows is you get to uh be part of the thing that you sort of um came up uh watching yeah sort of, of course you know. and mostly for an important wrestling promotion uh, yeah, that, yeah that's awesome yeah great it's a great um working for aw <laughs> aw is always good because uh they they treat you very good and everybody's professional and, Mm -hmm. I, I know a couple of the people there, so I can say hi to some people and I hang out. But uh, yeah, that would be my choice if I could work for a uh, bigger really nice. company full time, definitely. Okay. Uh, can you tell us about the Wrestling Federation where you currently wrestle? If my memory, if my memory is good, is uh, the Party Wall Wrestling? Oh yes, very good. Yeah, yeah. So Party Wall Wrestling was a, a thing that some friends of mine started about a, a 11 years ago, 10, 9 to 11 years ago, somewhere around there. Uh, and it's, this character comes from that. There's a lot of other characters that are very gimmicky, as you say, mm -hmm. like uh, my son, a pasta man, who okay. is a man made out of pasta. Uh, you know, we had a match at a party world of Aslan once where he kept saying he wasn't my son. And I kept saying, okay. no, I don't make a spaghetti. I only make a pizza. <laughs> so we had to have a match to see if he was my son. And, uh, you know, at the end of the match, he had me in a compromising situation. He had the chair. He was going to hit me with the chair. And I say, okay, you know what? The truth is you are out of my son. And now I need to teach you the most important lesson of a life. And that's if someone hurts you, you are hurt of them. So you go ahead and you hit me with the chair. But 
to my surprise, he threw the chair away and uh, he said he didn't want to hurt me. So I learned a lot about uh, people and how people kind of change that day. And I also learned that I have a son who's made out of a spaghetti. <laughs> and then now he goes to a, a he went to a college and now I think he's working in a restaurant, not a pizza restaurant. But those are the kinds of a matches we have at, at a PWR. And um, in Austin, Texas, unfortunately, there's been some rent increases. So a lot of venues have gone out of a business. So uh, right now we have a, our last show was at a climbing a gym. And okay. that was a fun. And I defended my title against a, the Agoid, who is like a, a rabbit, a man who steals a pizza. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen a guy who looks like him, but, well, but I, I, beat him, I, I beat him pretty easily. I'll just say that right now. It was a very short match. But um, uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. And um, now we're uh, finding out our next gig. Usually we wait till somebody calls and it books us or we find a, a good place to do a regular a gigs at. But uh, currently... No shows on the horizon for a party world wrestling. There's another one here in Austin called the Slam a Portal, okay. and um, I'll be doing that a show on a May 25th. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see what what else do I got going on? Yeah, and then I think mm, mm, later May, and then got some stuff filling up for uh, the okay. summer. Nice. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so Luigi. Uh, have you ever done a WWE tryout? No, I've never done a WWE tryout. You know, if I was um, if I was a younger, I probably would. But I think mm -hmm. at this point, for me to be on a WWE, it has to be a a thing where they bring me in, kind of as like a meme with with okay. the, the talent pool that they have. They I don't think they're going to uh, have a you know older indie wrestler mm -hmm. as a security guard. Nor would that really benefit me uh, that much at this point. It would I'd have to come out like a like a grumpy cat or something mm. where it's just like, oh, it's from the internet. I think like that is probably my best chance to be booked on a WWE. Where is mm -hmm. it? I think with like Ring of Honor or the AEW, yeah. I'm like more yeah. in contact with the people in, in that uh, scene. And so it's more likely, I would think they would bring me in for something like that. So I kind of like focus more of my energy towards there. But, you know, of course, obviously, if a WWE asked me to make a pizza, I, I come and I make a pizza. <laughs> Even though they probably rebrand me, they just call me Primo, and uh, yeah. I have to, uh, you know, make <clears throat> a chicken cacciatore and a meatballs instead of just a pizza. <laughs> uh, I remember in 2022, you competed at the ECW uh, Arena in Philadelphia, of course, oh, yeah. uh, for one of the most prestigious wrestling shows presented by the Battleground Wrestling, and you team up with the former ECW original member, uh, Little Guido, of course, uh, against Alpha Jr. and uh, Beatsman. Uh, Can you tell us sorry. something about this uh, wonderful wrestling experience? Yeah, that, that was that was a lot of a fun. I mean, obviously, it was a, nice to come out with a Little Guido, who I've watched quite a bit, and uh, who, is, who is awesome. Um, yeah, the guy, he still, he moves very well. He's very yeah. strong, despite being like oh, really? he's okay. very strong, huge of hands. He tore off up with those wow. those, those are chops. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was what I enjoyed about it was like basically my uh, basically my the the comeback I got in that match was a kicking out because I just kept they kept hitting me with all this uh, grotesque stuff. And I just like kicked out of all of, <laughs> of all of this, and then I just got the tag. And that that was that was all I did. But it felt to me very much like the classic ECW, where they would have like a goofy character just be like crucified, you know. So uh, I I felt uh, good to be able to withstand that punishment, and uh, you know, working with those guys, and then get the uh, hot tag to Guido and have him uh, him uh, set the uh, set the house on fire, and then afterwards this. Uh, I got to a come out at the end for a, a blue mini and a facade and a Danny Mo and give a presence out to the audience. So it was a very, uh, very cool for somebody who watched a lot of uh, ECW. And uh, I don't think Guido knew. Uh, I don't think he knew I was a wrestler at a first. I think he thought I was just a summer guy. Um, okay. Because for the match, he was like, uh, "So, so what can you do?" And I was like, I, wh "Whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever." Like asking me if I could. Uh, if I could take moves, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, any move. It's 
yeah, I can do it. And um, afterwards, <laughs> he was like, no, okay, yeah, yeah, you uh, you have great technique. You're a good wrestler. So I, I appreciated that. That was cool. And uh, yeah, getting to a hangout with with that crew. Yeah, it was a it was a very special night. It's still my cover photo on a, on a Facebook. It's okay. me and Ed yeah, Rubini yeah. and uh, Danny Moore. Yes, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, uh, in the country of the rising sun, I mean Japan, you wrestled against one of the best lightweight of the on the planet. I'm talking about Sima. Can you share us uh, this experience? And also, did you change your wrestling skills for this kind of opponent? Because we know that Sima is a very very fast wrestler. Yes. So, so the uh, my thoughts going into it, I, I trained very hard because obviously okay. as a Indie wrestler, we, we all want to go to Japan and show them that we have a, a strong style. Yeah, but um, that's very different than uh, yeah, U.S. style. But you know, you you don't necessarily a book a Luigi Primo for that. You you okay. want me to do the pizza, so I come and I do mm -hmm. the pizza. But I also uh, try to show that same energy, and it was um, it was a lot of a fun. Um, having this a match with such a, a powerful and a legendary uh, uh, wrestler as a Shima because I was able to, you know, absorb his moves. He gave me the uh, perfect driver. I kick wow. out of that. And then uh, then he gives me the Meteora and that, that mm -hmm. put me down, of course. But, uh, you know, to look at some of his other matches and see, okay, he had this opponent and this opponent did not a kick out of the perfect driver. So I was able to rise to the occasion. And even though he <laughs> defeated me because of my training and my skill and the mutual respect, I was able to uh, yeah. go the distance. And then, you know, from that match, what I learned from that going on to wrestle Kaz Hayashi on the Asema tour, um, okay. that was also cool to be able to uh, avoid his moves and give him a counter moves. And so it really felt like I had entered into the continuity of, uh, of wrestling, you know, where sometimes we have a, all these indie matches and you're not sure if what you do matters. But in those matches in Japan, it felt like I had, was part of the uh, history of wrestling. Like these moments that we were creating felt very important to me. So, uh, I really appreciated them giving me the opportunity to uh, show my skills and um, I felt okay about where I was at and um, I think I would like to uh, train even harder for my next tour in Japan. Nice. And we probably know the answer, but because uh, you wrestled a couple of times with uh, a guy like Cole Cabana, but you know... Uh, who is your uh, who is your funniest opponent in your wrestling car career and why? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, Colt Cabana, I have loved for a long time, so that was cool to be okay. able to attack with him. Mm. Man, I think I always enjoy a uh, always enjoy when I can work with the Dan the Dad. Do you know okay. him? No, no a, uh, I don't know him. From a St. Louis, he's like a. He's like a father. He's a dad. He has okay. like a mug. That's oh, like a preacher. A preacher. A preacher. And he punches people with the mug. Which oh, nice. Which the referee is uh, <laughs> okay with. Sadistic. So, so, yeah, we connect on that front. So it's always wow. fun to a... Uh, to it's a priceless. To, um, <laughs> now at this point, we, we've gotten... We've a tag, but we've also wrestled. Also, uh, there's a wrestler, Gregory Iron. Okay. Gregory Iron. Uh, he has a cerebral palsy. So his his arm is like this, but he's okay. like he's ripped, and he he's a great wrestler. And we had okay. a match in 2019 that was a uh, it was oh, okay. The, okay. It, it, I don't know if you you might have seen clips of me doing a pizza death match where there's a no ring, <laughs> and um, so that was a good to get all the uh, toppings out and a different pizza cutters. <laughs> and uh, so that was a very very fun uh, match. I would say that that's up. Wow. that might be the most of fun, but it's also the most of fun. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Like we said uh, earlier in the interview, you have been involved in AEW. Uh, why don't uh, Tony Khan or the Booker uh, push you as you deserve? <laughs> yeah, they have a. I think they have a lot of a uh, lot of wrestlers. They have a lot, yeah. of, a lot of talent. 
And so I'm totally good about um, that. It's uh, you know, I, I my my job in wrestling is just to keep my skills up and to mm-hmm. keep uh, my relevance up as a performer mm-hmm. and as a social media personality, so that yeah. uh, if they need a good pizza, then they know who to call. But it, the way I think about it now is they just don't need any of pizza chef wrestlers. But if they do, clearly I'm the only choice. So I just need to be the best pizza chef wrestler. And then, uh, you know, I feel like if I'm on a show uh, and there's no pizza, I can't make people a pizza. And it, it's good for the show. It's a good for Yes, of course. But uh, so right now, AW, they don't need a pizza. But if they do, I am going to be ready. We'll give it to them, and it's going to uh, it's going to uh, help them. But it has to be a good for for everybody. So right now, just whoever needs a good pizza, I can do it because I make the best <laughs> pizza. Yes, but, uh, Tony Khan, when he needs it, I'm going to be ready. And uh, can you name uh, a wrestler you uh, you never face up, uh, but you would like to wrestle with? I would like to uh, actually have a singles match against the Colt Cabana because we've, we've tagged together. Yeah. But we, we haven't wrestled each other. And I would like to test my skills against him because he has uh, so much knowledge with the uh, English style of wrestling and also obviously American style. And yeah, I would really, really like to, uh, to face him. And that will be fantastic. Oh, yeah, of course. God, promoter, do this, please. <laughs> yeah, do it. There's a, yeah, there's another Canadian, uh, there's a Canadian wrestler Sorry. that I wrestled uh, a, about a year and a half ago named Tony Baroni. <laughs> wow. I, that I don't like, know him. That will be a perfect tag team for from, you, uh, my friend. From Vancouver. I would like to okay. have a, rema- a rematch against him as well. Oh, wow. Uh, for our pre-closing segment, I'll give you a name in a few words. Tell me something about him, all right? So the first one, Kenny Omega. The the greatest the guy gene. Nice. Rob Van Dam. A ultimate athlete. Nice. Yeah, I'm totally agree about that. Shawn Michaels. The the second of best of all time. Yeah. I think you know who the <laughs> first one is, being from a Canada. Mm, Brett the Hitman Hart. There you go. Yeah! <laughs> uh, and we have the same opinion, you know. Uh, and uh, the last one, Luigi Primo, yourself. Oh, uh, I make a best of pizza. I'm a best wrestler. You think that you can make a better pizza? You gotta see me in the ring, and I'm gonna need you on the back like the door, slam you down, and I put you in the oven for 600 degrees. <laughs> and by that I mean win the match. And I'm not actually gonna put you in the oven. <laughs> nice promo. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you uh, so much for uh, this uh, practically 25 minutes of your generous time. So, as usual, for ending, my partner Benoit, aka uh, Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the French prophet, of course. And he tried to predict the future of our guests. Go ahead, my friend. Okay, first of all, Luigi, uh, thank you so much for the interview. My pleasure. Okay. Okay, I predict to you maybe in the near future, uh, me and Jonathan, we're going to uh, meet you and we're going to eat pizza together. Yes. May, may it always be true. I, what are, where, where are in Canada are you guys? Quebec we City? are from Quebec City, Canada, okay. at three hours of Montreal. So. Oh, okay. Yes, we are French Canadian, so that's why we have a, a big accent. <laughs> yeah. Sometime we go to US yes, for yeah. the wrestling conventions. Yeah. And maybe yeah, we're going to meet you. I hope, hope to see you at a convention. Yes, or maybe I of get course. A and I predict you, you probably... Uh, release your uh, your own pizza sauce or your own uh, uh, pizza stuff. So uh, I push that on the inner. So yeah, I, I think that is not outside the realm of a possibility. I make a pizza all the time. 
<laughs> Maybe you can go in Quebec. Yeah. In the future. Yeah, oh yeah, you guys course. you don't have any pizza restaurants in Quebec, right? Uh there's a uh, a couple of a uh, pizza but uh that's probably not the same taste that the the pizza pi, the the pizza man himself oh, which is I, the best yeah. remo. I, I could have shown you guys. I could show you how to make a good pizza and you guys could uh, show me maybe a, a poutine. You guys have a poutine? Yeah, we oh, have you a love poutine. poutine. Yeah, we have a Putin. Not uh, the Russian president, but the, the food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And we, uh, I predict something interesting because there are some uh, rumors regarding the uh, ECW um, with Paul Heyman. With Paul Heyman, the new ECW. Uh, yeah, the new ECW uh, with Paul Heyman Maybe will be uh, released uh, in a couple of months. So why not if we? Uh, created a, a kind of uh, FBI with Guido, Luigi Primo, and uh, um, the, the big Sal Gradiano, yeah. all the guys oh, yeah. all together for a FBI 2.0. I push that uh, once again on the universe, and I wish you all the best for your wrestling career, and please continue to entertain Every every people all around the world. Without you, the wrestling was very different. And thank you so much. Hey, oh, th thank you, Jonathan Benoit. Yeah, Paul, Paul Heyman. There's money on the table here. Don't uh, throw money in the garbage. Just book an FBI with Luigi Primo. Yeah. So thank you so much for the interview. That was uh, huge, honestly. Thank you. Goodbye, yeah, thank you guys.